So today we'll be taking an in-depth look at the Jeff Hardy and Sheamus storyline. Let's take a look at how all this started. Sheamus and Jeff Hardy both made their returns this year. Both Sheamus and Jeff were dealing with some huge injuries and making big returns on SmackDown. Sheamus returned and quickly turned heel to pick up right where he left off at. Sheamus' original plans were to take out everyone that he didn't see fit for SmackDown. There was a point where Sheamus focused on guys like Chad Gable and really tried to take them out. Sheamus was competing in matches with local talent and quickly securing the easiest wins. However, Sheamus couldn't help but notice that everyone kept talking about Jeff Hardy and his return. WWE even did a little mini documentary series that they aired on SmackDown leading up to Jeff's return, and this really got on Sheamus' nerves. He wanted everyone to stop talking about Jeff Hardy. There was even some weeks where it looked like Sheamus was going to get physical with Michael Cole because Michael Cole kept mentioning Jeff. Week after week, Michael Cole would always talk about Jeff Hardy's return after one of Sheamus' matches. So it got to the point that Sheamus heard enough about Jeff. This would of course lead to Jeff Hardy making a big return to confront Sheamus. They went back and forth and attacked each other a few times. But other than the fact that Sheamus was annoyed that they kept talking about Jeff, there wasn't much story to the feud other than that. But their story did reach a new level with the entire car crash hit and run scene. The scene was made to incriminate Jeff Hardy as being responsible for the hit and run. Whoever set Jeff up had a lot of time to incriminate him. They put the bottle in his car to make it look like Jeff was drinking. And of course there was the paperwork that said the car belonged to Jeff Hardy. Then besides that, we had Elias, who was on the floor and wasn't moving at all. It was clear that Elias was most likely the most affected individual here. So even though it's meant to look like Jeff Hardy hit Elias with the car, then got out of the car to try to flee the scene, that doesn't seem to be what actually happened here. Jeff Hardy was found several feet away from the car. That's something we know for sure and something that they clearly showed that week on SmackDown. However, it's not really clear how Jeff got all the way over there by the side of the fence if his car was in front of the parking lot. That's a little hard to read and know exactly what happened there. So let's switch over to these eyewitnesses and what they say happened. The eyewitnesses' reports automatically puts Jeff Hardy in the clear. They said that Jeff Hardy wasn't the one that caused the hit and run. There was another car involved in the scene. The witnesses say that the individual that caused the hit and run took off running in all black clothing, and no one could really make out who it was. After that, Jeff Hardy is arrested, and one part that I found to be the most telling was Jeff's response to seeing Elias being stretchered out. Now, I'm not really sure what happened to Elias. Was he hit with the car? Was he Jeff's passenger? I'm not quite sure, and I don't know if WWE ever explained it that much in detail, but it's clear that whatever happened fully took out Elias. But Jeff was so shocked when he saw Elias. So that makes it clear that Jeff didn't know about what happened to Elias before he actually saw him in that moment that he was being put in the police car. Jeff comes out later that night and attacks Sheamus to close out SmackDown. Jeff Hardy comes the following week to announce that he was found innocent and that upon further review of the eyewitness reports, they said that the individual that did the hit and run had red hair. Now this is where this story gets a little inconsistent for me. The week before that, it was being said that the individual behind the hit and run was covered in all black clothing, black hoodie, black pants, and that no one saw who it was. So I'm thinking whoever did this to Jeff Hardy is smart, and they obviously had their face completely covered, and that's why no one could give any real description of who it was. That makes perfect sense and shows that the person was smart enough to cover up who they were. But now fast forward the following week and Jeff Hardy is saying that the witnesses all saw red hair. So which one is it? Was he covered up or did they actually see his face and red hair? That part bothered me a bit because if someone is going to pull something like this off and not hide their identity, then that's just a pretty dumb move on their part. All those witnesses there, and you're just going to have your face out after they saw you do the hit and run? If that's the case, then Seamus clearly isn't the brightest. But Jeff Hardy is thinking, red hair, it's got to be Seamus. So now the story deepens, and now Jeff actually has a reason to go after Seamus with some vengeance. 
He believes Sheamus tried to end his career, take away his livelihood, not to mention that Elias is also out of action for a long time because of this accident. In reality, Elias is actually dealing with a big injury, so he will be missing several months of action. This was just a way to fully write him off TV, and it was a great move because it instantly gives Elias a storyline when he returns. Elias is clearly going to be on the hunt to find out who did this to him when he's cleared to return. So it does have a feeling of being a more long-term storyline based of that alone. But Jeff Hardy is fully convinced that it was Sheamus and wants to go after him. But here's where the big story turning question comes into play. Did Sheamus actually do it? This is up for debate right now. Sheamus has obviously denied the accusations of him being behind the hidden run. Even though Sheamus is a sneaky heel and can't be trusted, I can't help but actually believe him when he said that he didn't do it. And here's why. As of this current moment, there's no actual evidence that Sheamus did it. Now, in reality, obviously the Performance Center should have some sort of camera that could show us the whole thing and answer all of the questions. But that's way too easy. So it's probably going to continue as a mystery. But it just feels like if Sheamus actually did this, he would have been rubbing it in Jeff Hardy's face, not denying and hiding from the truth. Another thing we talked about right after this situation happened was how Sheamus was already backstage in his full ring attire at the same time of the hit and run. So unless he changed extremely fast, it couldn't have been him. WWE is stressing the clue and hint of red hair. That's what they keep saying. And even though Sheamus fits that description, it seems like it was meant to mislead us into thinking it was Sheamus. It looks like this could be building up to a huge reveal that it actually wasn't Sheamus. Sheamus is innocent, and it's a returning superstar that is actually behind everything. So this red hair thing is important because it really narrows down the list of possibilities. For everyone hoping it's Roman Reigns or something like that, unfortunately, it won't be because the red hair description automatically removed a lot of people from the list of possibilities. So who's left? Who can possibly be behind the hit and run? I did some research online, and it turns out that WWE actually released a mini gallery of all the red hair superstars in 2020. So let's look through that list and pick out some suspects. WWE's list of red hair suspects include Becky Lynch, Sheamus, Murphy, Kurt Hawkins, Gentleman Jack Gallagher, Sami Zayn, Eric Rowan, Eric Young, Heath Slater, and Pete Dunne. So that's a list of red hair suspects. Of course, this list was released by WWE earlier this year, and some of those superstars have been released. So that's another issue that shrinks down that list once again. It seems that the prime suspect right now is Sami Zayn. And he fits into the story perfectly. Sami Zayn was recently stripped of the Intercontinental Championship and didn't really have any say in that decision. We haven't seen Sami in a while now, so who knows what the character is going through with the loss of his title. Maybe Sami Zayn was filled with rage, so he went over to the Performance Center and took out his anger and his frustration with WWE by pulling off his hit and run on some SmackDown superstars. It's probably what Sami Zayn did to make himself feel better and get back at WWE for stripping him of the title. That's a theory going on right now. Honestly, if it's not going to be Sheamus, then Sami really is the only possibility that's left. Another possible solution to this mystery is the usage of the SmackDown hacker. We haven't talked about the SmackDown hacker in weeks because they just went dark out of nowhere. He no longer makes appearances on SmackDown and his last Twitter post is May 28th, which was several weeks ago. We haven't seen this much silence from the hacker in a long time. Many fans were wondering if the character was being dropped because of this long disappearance. But reports claim that the SmackDown hacker character is still unfolding and has plans. If anything, I think the SmackDown hacker silence is actually quite scary. If he's posting the same little clip every week, then we're going to get burnt out of him and it won't be the same anymore. But have him disappear for a while, make us forget about him, and then bring him right back with a big reveal. And that would be insanely impactful. That could be what's actually happening here. Maybe the hacker has gone away because a big reveal is on the way with this situation. The hacker can manage the camera. So what if he has footage of the hit and run? The hacker can really expose someone being behind the situation. Maybe it was Seamus and the hacker is getting so sick of his lies 
that he's going to expose the truth for this situation. That is a possibility as well. WWE seems to be sticking to the red hair description, but none of the witnesses have actually pointed Sheamus out as the culprit here. So it seems that another big reveal is on the way. What are your thoughts on this situation and who do you think could be the big return here? Leave your comments, don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on, and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching guys.